we take you back to that trending story. Top of mind today, the ANC's NEC. More ructions emerged this weekend as some members of the ANC's National Executive Committee demanded action against the president over the Palapala burglary. Uh, ANC presidential hopeful Indira Sisulu went as far as publicly calling for the president's resignation over the 2020 theft of hard foreign currency at the president's Limpopo farm. For more on the party's image ahead of the December elective conference, uh, we are joined now by a brand reputation management advisor, Suli Moweng, and political analyst, uh, Sandile Swana. Gentlemen, good evening, and thank you very much uh, for your time. We'll look at it both from a public relations exercise, brand ANC, but also from a political uh, uh, brand equity point of view, Dr. Swana, and you'll be able to help us as long, along with Soli as well on all those fronts. But if you listen to the closing remarks of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, you, you, you hear of uh, things like uh, a meaningful engagement. You hear words like uh, uh, manifesto commitments. You hear words like uh, uh, building local democracy uh, and uh, somewhat uh, indicating that there's a comprehensive plan to deal with, with, with corruption. Do these things stick with South Africans? Are South Africans buying this talk that is uh, coming from that um, uh, closing remark? That is one. Let me begin with you. Yes, the, I think one of the statements that uh, President Ramaphosa made was that this is the last uh, ordinary NEC meeting for, for the term of five years, which means they've now come to the end of term. Now, if you want to know what this means in the mind of South Africans politically, talk about the manifesto, you then need to say, we have a track record now that the five things we promised in 2017 uh, and got elected, today they have been delivered, here they are, and we are starting to develop the next five that we are going to implement in the next five years. But uh, there is a lot of admission, as is usually the case with Ramaphosa, of many failures. Certainly, uh, I mean, when he talked about poverty uh, in South Africa, the escalation of poverty, the dropping living standards, and the inability of ordinary South Africans to cope with day-to-day -day life, uh, it shows a great, great sign of failure. It struck me as a man who almost is praying for the next event to happen somewhere in the world, such as the war in Ukraine, to then say, no, it was not only COVID-19, but the war in Ukraine, and maybe something else at the range of China that have caused me not to deliver the first one. So I think the South Africans are probably tired uh, of hearing these things where there are no fruits. The current ANC Leadership Collective, Soli, one sister believe that it is doing something or at least did something in the five years that they've been there uh, to deal, for example, with things like corruption and to deal with the, the challenges that South Africans are, are facing with the hope, of course, that they will be renewing, so to speak, their contract with South Africans uh, for another five-year term. Uh, if, if you look at brands and, and, and how brands build that kind of loyalty, uh, with uh, the, they are consumers. Do, do you think this particular brand, brand A and C, has hit the mark? <laughs> no, it hasn't. I, look, we must remember that there are three broadly three audiences that, that brand A C is, is trying to address: the, the broader South African community, and there are then the people in the A and C. But even the people in the A and C are divided in two. There are people who want Ramaphosa to be out, no matter what. There are people who are going to attack him for not having, for instance, a nationalized, nationalized reserve bank. And those are internal ANC issues. ANC issues. I, I don't think he, did, he failed to do it because he failed, but because he, he doesn't uh, ideologically think that it's the right way to go. I believe I agree with him on that. I don't think we should nationalize the reserve bank. But in terms of the broader community of South Africans, so the, many people consider that South Africa has been turned into some kind of Orwellian animal farm where some people are touchable, others are not touchable, especially by the justice, uh, 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 by the justice, uh, criminal justice system. Zuma has still not been charged for, for state capture. He is at the core of state capture. But, uh, but, but though he is, keeps going on about wanting to bring the Guptas back to South Africa, Dudu Zani Zuma was their partner, their co-partner in, the in the business. He comes and goes, he, flo he flaunts his, his 
his wealth in, in Dubai or on boats, on expensive boats and yeah, stuff like that. He's just he's not been that type. If she's serious about catching the the Guptas, he must go off she must go off the, to the Zani. She hasn't done so. So she also speaks like a politician these days. These people have mastered the art of, say, of speaking good English, of saying the right things, and that, but they're not going to fool South Africans. I think South Africans, the first thing they want is to see that there's justice, and they, especially those big names in the ANC. In case they might speak the right thing right now, the justice team has still not said he is innocent of anything. So suddenly, all these ANC people are now putting forward for election people who are totally criminally uh, uh, discredited. It's, it's very sad for South Africa. In, in, in as far as that, I mean, is, is, is concerned, uh, you've mentioned that there are, of course, various uh, uh, sectors of society that uh, would interpret whatever is happening this weekend. You've got those who are internally within the ANC, you've got those who are in the opposition, uh, you've got those who are just ordinary South Africans who, who want their lives being better. Does the fact that um, the president seemed to have somewhat this weekend won the war within his party, not decisively, of course, but seems to have been pushed uh, down the, the, the road to maybe December uh, to, to say, well, we'll deal with it when, when we get there. One, does that I improve his, um, uh, how he's perceived uh, by, by the general South African public? No, but look, Pala Pala is still happening. I don't think he's going to be charged before before the next election of the of the ANC for Pala Pala. I mean, if that does happen, obviously he would have to step aside. He did say through his spokesperson that if he gets charged, he will step aside. But he's, he's unlikely to be charged before Pala. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens if he wins in December and then gets charged afterwards. Would the ANC ask him to leave ahead of the 2024 election? That's that's to be seen. I also be whether or not the ANC renews itself. This is something it's been saying for many, many years. Only hardcore ANC people believe the ANC is renewing itself. It's like a, a, a thousand year kind of project. It never happens. It's getting worse every year. And it's, and the thing is, when the, the ANC remains the Makulubas of South African politics, when the ANC goes wrong, South Africa goes wrong. That's the painful part of it. Well, that was what we've been hearing very publicly. Uh, in fact, she was willing to, to even defend uh, those comments go, going into this uh, particular NEC. Uh, Nomvula Mukonyane is saying this current NEC has been the weakest in a hundred uh, years of the existence uh, of the ANC, or 110 years or so of the existence uh, of, of the ANC. Now the question is, as they go to the elective conference in December, will the new NEC that will emerge have the will and the capacity to lead South Africa? It's, it's unlikely, uh, I would put the chances of uh, electing a successful NEC, I would say they probably got a 40% chance, no more than that. Um, the weakness, and, and in this case, is, is correct, uh, in, in this specific way, I actually thought these guys for the first time are going to be serious about this thing more. I thought by now they would have been knowing who the NEC is going to be and that everybody in the ANC is now rallying around one top six and relatively clear who the NEC is going to be because they would have used the past five years to really tighten their show and tighten their ship and all that sort of thing. But instead of doing that, they are more divided uh, the leagues have been largely dysfunctional. I'm talking about the youth league, the women's league. So it's been a disaster, absolute total disaster. Um, and, 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 and there is no prospect that I'm aware of that they are going to do better because also statistically they've been consistent in losing both since uh, the Polugwane conference. And they are losing, they've lost the metros, they are likely to certainly lose Houghton and they are likely to be very, very weakened nationally and in KZN. So, and the resources to sweeten deals and to, to bribe people to agree with you are getting less and less. How, how does this work in, in, in the political world, that Uswane, this idea of saying, well, it, it's an ANC leadership collective, but I can come out and say this one has been... Uh, the weakest. Am I saying these ones have been the weakest, but I have been strong amongst them, or uh, I'm saying these ones have been the weakest because uh, this 
of this leader, this president has been leading, which, again, I mean, it, it is contrary to what the ANC tells us. They say the NEC is the, the highest decision-making body. It doesn't say that one particular individual is the highest decision-making individual in, in, in this organization. So how, how, do you, how does it work? How do you then come out and say, I'm going to separate myself from this weak collective? Uh, you know, as a parent supporter... <laughs> I, 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 I there you something. go. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, the ideas that we could have said in this season, Pirates was the strongest. In that season, it was the weakest. And so, uh, and it's been a long history. I started supporting them in the 70s. So, I, I know how to take a good beat. So, the, the thing about the ANC collective, in the history of the ANC, even before the Ramaphosa NEC, if you like, there have been some that were, were weak. But to actually beat those records uh, and, and run the weakest, it's also possible to determine that. But when you are a member of that collective and a citizen of South Africa and a freedom fight, there must be no time that you are dishonest in the assessment of the performance of the state, the performance of the elected government, the performance of the top six, and the performance of the NEC. As Amilcar Cabral correctly pointed out, that tell no lies and claim no easy victories. Tell the people the truth. So, Nongula Mukwanyane is simply telling the truth that, yes, I've been part of this music team, and for the past five years we've been losing consistently and giving a lot of excuses inside the ANC. I mean, in some provinces, Free State and Western Cape to be specific, the branches have largely been non-existent. I'm, talk I'm not even talking what they did to the state. I'm talking about themselves. Disorganized, and the records don't tally of the members. Some members, I think they were not renewed in the, the big era, and so on and so forth. But they said from 2017 until now, they are going to be a clean mean machine, and they couldn't do it. And so, the... Conversation always, of course, centers around the, others are saying it was a PR exercise, you will tell me whether it was a good or a bad PR exercise. President Sir Ramaphosa's comments that ANC is accused number one, especially with the state capture report having come out. He's still living under that particular shadow. Was that bad PR? Was it meaning well, but it kind of worked negatively for them? Well, Ramaphosa is very good at using language. I mean, he knows that he could say that and try and please as many people as possible. He's good at that. He's good at trying to love, to be loved by everybody, to be approved by everybody. Of course, the truth is ANC is the number one accused in within Kansas, led by, by, by with, so within the, the whole state capture project and other forms of corruption. But he knows that they, 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 they what, what, what has to happen, the detail of looking at who did what, when, how, how they benefited, is where a lot of us are going to be caught up. So it's, it's easy to say the ANC is accused number one. There's nothing wrong with that. But, it, you know, some people say, yeah, GC acknowledges that we are accused number one. But he also knows that getting to the detail of get, making sure that individuals with these specific things are thrown into jail will probably take a lot more years to go, especially some of the top, top guys and big names. Let's take a break. When we continue, we'd like to get your thoughts and your views tonight on this conversation. Will the new NEC that will emerge in December have the will and capacity to help solve the problems of South Africa? One would say to lead the country. Zero double one, uh, zero seven two rather, uh, double one zero double five eight four. Uh, we'll take your thoughts on that. Zero seven two double one zero double five eight four. Uh, let us in on what your thoughts are. We'll talk to that when we continue next. We're back live with you tonight on In Focus, and uh, thanks uh, for staying on. Now, the conversation continues still with us. Brand Reputation Management Advisor, Soli Weng, Political Analyst, uh, Sandy Leswana, the ANC, coming off a three-day final NEC uh, meeting, at least uh, for this uh, term of five years in this NEC, uh, as they head uh, to the uh, December elective conference. Of course, we're asking you the question tonight. Will the new ANC NEC have the will and capacity to lead the country? This, of course, as cracks are clearly 
uh, apparent to, for all to see. That is one, one of the things that is being reported. We were not in that NEC, but at least those who apparently have ways and means to get into those NECs are telling us that uh, uh, were very public in calling for the resignation of their boss, the president of the country, at, whom, at whose behest they are serving uh, in, in, in government. Does he fire them? How does that work for him? Uh, because, of course, he doesn't want to seem like he's using his power and abusing his power as president to punish them for holding their views within the party. And if he doesn't, politically, does it put him at a, a weak position? I think that, uh, you know, I mean, Cyril is, is walking a, a tight rope. He's actually on thin ice to try and get to the other side of the December conference and secure the position. Now, some of the attacks uh, could be that, well, even if we, you get a chance to win, uh, there are things that after winning we've got to accommodate. So, might actually be saying, even if you win, uh, there are certain things that we want uh, that we must put in place for, for a certain stream of the aliens, as you know, the affections. So, uh, so that is that. But on a general note, uh, unfortunately, Cyril's position is assailable. In other words, his moral high ground and, and his moral standing can be questioned. Uh, I agree with Soli that the actual, even if the, there's a negative report from this parliamentary inquiry right now, uh, the inquiry, the full formal inquiry like Mkwebane's one, will take a long time to finish. But he stands at risk to be recalled at any rate next year. So there's a lot of accommodation that he needs to actually work on with his opponents and the people that disagree with him. So I look at that from that point of view. Uh, morally, in another country, Cyril will probably be facing a, 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 a position where he's going to, 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 to just resign voluntarily. But in South Africa, I mean, you could be charged for rape, you could be charged for all sorts of things, and you still become president. And that's the thing, one of the questions saying um, they are both not charged, that is the two presidential candidates, uh, Zuelim Kize and Ramaphosa. Uh, one uh, stepped aside on the Digital Vibe saga, this Palapala, this current one, is not stepping aside. One is seemingly disgraced and the current one is, is not. How does that work? I don't know where that story came from that maybe, for instance, to say that Zuelim Kiza is disgraced and Cyril is not. I think if you listened to the initial reaction, and I think that TA has sustained that position over time, how Germanism reacted, because the DA had a position before that said they could partner with Cyril Ramaphosa's ANC. But Stenaism basically said we cannot work with a person who is stuffing money into furniture. You know, uh, this idea of, of, of money laundering and, and doing things and stuffing money into furniture um, has not said well with investors and, 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 and the economic slash financial slash business community. And there's a lot of ordinary South Africans who believe in paying taxes and other things. We just wonder how the president got this off the ground. So, so there's a lot of dubiousness that has now attached to Cyril Ramaphosa. Let alone that not long ago, the court found that it had to compensate the people of Maritana, or at least permitted the families and the other people who were affected by his decisions about Maritana, that he now can be sued against to somehow defend the case of compensation. They have been permitted by the court which somehow means that in order to pursue wealth, in order to pursue cash for himself, he was prepared to let people die. So all of those things are there, depending which school of thought you come from, those things are there. These are big moral questions around several things. So the polls conducted uh, throughout uh, the country, at least in recent times, seem all to, to indicate that South Africans really do feel that things are going in the wrong direction uh, uh, under the uh, leadership of the African National 
Congress. And, and, and if you look at that and looking at the 2024 elections, if one is to engage in an exercise of winning the confidence of the voters, what would a brand like ANC need to be doing? Or is it too late? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think it's too late. The brand ANC is damaged. All right. I think the next, the 2024 elections are for the opposition party, parties to work smarter to win. The ANC has given them, and it continues to give them all the reasons to convince South Africans, especially those people who, who are sitting at home. Those people who are saying, I don't see whom to vote for. I'm just going to sit it out. They are looking for something a bit more insp inspiring from the opposition. Perhaps maybe the existing opposition parties are not, have not found a way to do so. But it's not up to the ANC to win the elections. It's up to the opposition parties to win the elections. They have to work harder. And if they lose, and, and we, we, look, we also have to talk about the Independent Electoral Commission. We have to make sure that it's independent, really. Its processes before, during, after the elections have to be watched. We, do, we cannot continue to trust it blindly. And this is important. And the, but then the opposition parties still need to get those people who are sitting at home not wanting to vote to come back. The ANC, I don't see the ANC reviving itself. Too much stuff has happened on brand ANC. And a lot of people saw Ramaphosa as the saviour. Some people even used to describe him as the last hope for South Africa. Look at what has become of him. The, I don't see how anybody else imagine The ANC, if you, if you were to, to haul uh, Carl Nehaus in front of your TV camera, look at Sisulu, others who are aligned to Zuma, they will say they want this man to go. The, the, the next ANC is going to be filled with people who are on both sides. They're not going to be agreeing on anything. It's going to be hard for the ANC to determine political and economic policies for South Africa because it's going to, be, it's going to continue for the sake of unity, bringing all sorts of people who don't agree on anything under the same tent, hoping that they'll get it right. They won't. And while the ANC continue, continues on, the, on that path, South Africa suffers. The ANC is not going to get right. It needs to leave power go out there into the wilderness and heal while South Africa continues its life. We can't continue to have a country that continues to be held hostage by fractures in the ANC. It's bad for South Africa. But looking at what's happening in local government and how the opposition parties themselves are floundering and not taking advantage of this wounded uh, buffalo, so to speak, uh, to use and borrow that uh, terminology, um, there's seemingly going to be a, a situation where there will be no opposition party that would be strong enough to take them on. No, definitely. I think that the opposition, these guys cannot continue doing things the same way over and over again and, and, and hope for different outcomes. You know, everybody from time to time emerges with a new party. They want to be, they think they're going to be the best next thing for South Africa. They're God's gift to South Africa. It's not going to work. The more parties we have, the more individuals coming into the system, the more they split. The, the pie is only this big. So the more you have children wanting a piece of the pie, the, 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 the easier it's going to be for the African National Congress. So these opposition people need to get together and agree on the, a number of good things that are good for South Africa and forget egos. The thing is, we have politics in South Africa that's driven by egos. My Shama wants to be president. My Mani wants to be president. Singh is a GB wants to be president. Everybody comes in to say, I'm going to be the next best thing. It's not going to work. They need to work together. The NC didn't come to power alone. People forget that. And the donor for democracy, NGOs, and conscription campaigners, co communists, trade unions came together and said, let's stand behind the ANC led by Mandela. And anyone who thinks that they're going to lead to be the ANC on their own is dreaming. Nobody's going to do that. They need to shut their, 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 their egos aside, work together for South Africa, not for themselves. People mustn't think, I must be the one to cut the ribbon. They must say, what's good for South Africa going forward? South Africa is not going to heal while the ANC continues to press its knee on its neck. That's the truth. So finally, as we wrap up, is this thing in South Africa that we look for a meaningful developmental agenda? And... Um, is that thing still alive in, in the ANC? Is that something that they could still strive for and something that the next NEC could possibly come up with? No, I mean, I, I listened to the president's speech and, and my problem, uh, for instance, uh, just to make one quick example that people can take, Tabombegi raised the problem since 2019 that the ANC does not have an economic plan. And till today, and he has raised it sharply in his last criticism of the Ramaphosa regime, 
and and they have not answered that. There is no economic plan. So the the so there's nothing that's going to happen in that area. There's no plan. Uh, there's no capacity. There's absolutely nothing that that's not going to work. So the the issue that you can take home is that we need a new team of people. Eagles must be put aside. And we will get help from outside of the African National Congress. As to how long that is going to take, it's another topic. But the DA, which should be part of the alternative, needs to also really look at its ego and trim it to size. Question we're asking tonight on 72 584 Will the new emerging NEC of the ANC uh, have the will and capacity to lead South Africa? These are your thoughts tonight on WhatsApp. The new NEC to come in December will not be anything new. The ANC has become more of itself than its objectives outlined in the Freedom Charter. The ANC has failed and it must accept its failures. That's Mashatsi Maibani in Teflon. Uh, the leadership will, that will emerge in December will make no difference as they dismally failed to deliver the basics of service delivery for the past 28 years. People are suffering under the leadership of the ANC. The poor become poorer and the rich continue to be rich. We lost trust in the ANC. What they know better is to loot the taxpayers' money. Those are your thoughts tonight uh, there on WhatsApp and that's where we will leave them.